What up, good people? Today, we in the kitchen or whatever. Yes, I am doing keto meals for you today. Not one, not two, three recipes. Hold on. She doing three? She might love us or whatever. I do. I love you. Let's get into it. Recipe number one, beef tits. Mm -hmm. Recipe number two, cauliflower macaroni and cheese. Three, we're doing shrimp and rice, baby. Let's get into it. All right, good people, let's get started. So the meat that I'm using is Top Sirloin Certified Beef Tips. Woo, that's a mouthful. Okay, Top Sirloin Certified Beef Tips for stewing. That's what we're gonna use. I have 1.88 pounds. Go ahead and go for two pounds, same seasonings, same recipe. You are gonna be good to go. Let's season this or whatever. So we're gonna start with some Italian seasoning. I'm gonna go pretty heavy on the Italian seasoning. I pretty much do for all meats. In fact, I'm gonna go heavy on everything that doesn't have sodium. This lemon pepper. We're gonna put lemon pepper on our meat. It's not just for chicken. You can put it on a lot of things. Yes. Now this does have some sodium in it, but it's actually not that bad from the brand that I get it from. I think it's McCormick. I'm not sure. And we're going to put some Lowry's on here, but you might be surprised. We're only going to use a little Lowry's. I actually prefer some other seasonings to Lowry's. Yes, I do. I know. I know. Am I going to lose my card? Let's put some onion powder on here. Now we're going to go pretty heavy with the onion powder. Why? It's flavorful and it doesn't have sodium. So I want to put a little extra. And then we're going in for the garlic powder. Same thing here, no sodium. So with the garlic powder, I'm just going to go a little bit heavier and the flavor for garlic powder is just wonderful. So that meat is getting season, season, hunty. And that is what's going to make the difference with these beef tips than your regular, regular ones. Some Old Bay. Now, I'm not sure. Is it Old Bay or Old Bay? I don't know. But my bottle says Old Bay, and we're going to put a pretty generous amount on that. It's not just for fish. You can use it for other things. And then we're going to go in with a little bit of, let's see, I think we're going for smoked paprika. So I like my paprika smoked. You don't have to have it this way. If you just have paprika, go for it. But I would encourage you to get some smoked paprika. It does make a difference. That smoked flavor definitely comes out. And you can see your girl went a little heavy. Again, it doesn't have sodium. All right, and next we are going to go for some black pepper. Get into this salt and pepper shaker though. I got that from Fat Fit Fun one month and I am so excited about it. So we're gonna put a pretty good amount of pepper on that. Just think about how you uh, might feel about like a peppered steak. Heavily pep, uh, let me say it like this, meat that has a lot of pepper on it, to me, tastes good. So I put a pretty good amount of pepper on that. Now. Listen, this seasoning right here, this saison, this going to get you together or whatever. I'm just learning about this, but this is what you need in your life. If you don't have this, get it ASAP. Go on wherever you have to go and get it. Look how much I'm putting on there. Now, this has sodium, but it is probably what I use the most of. I love that seasoning. Your girl put on gloves because my nails ain't finna turn colors. That Saison will discolor bowls, glass, and nails. So be careful with that. I also put the gloves on because look, y'all might come for me in the comments and I ain't trying to hear it. So let's just roll this meat around in all these seasonings and make sure that it is nice and seasoned on every single side. 
This meat's gonna be good just because of what you did right here. But it's more common. I wouldn't have done a video if I didn't have more to show y'all. Look, just look. Okay, so she's ready. Now we've got to get to our vegetables. Set your stuff up. You want to cut your veggies like I did in advance. I already had mine set up, so let's go. Green pepper, one full green bell pepper. You're going to have to have it. Certainly you could use more, but I use one of everything. One orange pepper. These peppers don't have a lot of carbs at all. There are some, but we are only using one pepper of each color. One yellow pepper. Okay. And then we're going to use one red pepper. I love red pepper. I was tempted to do two, but I just wanted to make sure I watched the carbs for this video. And then we're going to do one full onion. Keep in mind, onions actually have a little bit more carbs. We're only using one for the whole meal. And this is going to be for me like six portions. Okay. So this is what you're going to need for your veggies. Bell pepper, orange pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper, <laughs> red pepper, and onions. Okay. She ready. That's beautiful. That's a lot of nutrients right there. We about to cook all those nutrients out, but you know what? It's going to be worth it. Sorry, y'all. I just got a text message. I hate when that happens on my videos. And let's get into the next thing. We are going to need mushrooms. This is one pack of portabella sliced. You will need to have this. All right, we're ready to cook. Coconut oil, spray your pan. I'm just doing this to demonstrate. I'd already sprayed my pan. Now we're gonna put our meat in that pan. Okay, so what you saw is that I put all of the meat in and I'm going to let it cook a little bit on this one side. So basically we're gonna let that, you know, brown. And then what's going to happen is you will see that I will flip literally each piece so that I brown the other side. Now the point of this is because you wanna get the, that meat seared. Get, get some brown on it. I actually get a little char on it before I deglaze this pan and add my liquid and then actually cook this meat. The, oh, I wanna stop here. I wanted to tell y'all about these tongs. Just look at them. Isn't that nice how it has the little extra support there? Get you some. These are from Meyer, And um, I just really love that little extra support. It's really nice. Okay. Anyway, so you're going to want, when it comes to this meat, to brown it on both sides because that charred, once you deglaze the pan, that charred, that, that char that you get on the meat is literally going to be a part of the seasoning, a part of your glaze, right? That you're creating. And then also, um, it's like it's almost like it helps with the tenderizing the meat. I don't know if that's right. I'm not a cook like that, a professional, but I this meat ends up being so tender when it's done. I'm not sure if this really helped with the process, but I do know that this is a step that you don't want to skip. So as you can see, I'm flipping all the pieces. You're going to want to do this. Don't um, you know, skip any, do every single piece. Um, another thing I just want to say about these beef tips, this is not like steak tips. Um, I was unfamiliar with making these until recently. I actually ordered steak from Shipped and they brought me this and I was heavily pissed. Um, and in fact, Shipped gave me my money back and told me I could keep the meat. So since they said I could keep it, I tried to cook it and lo and behold, it was the best meat ever. I've been buying it ever since. But um, Basically, this meat needs about an hour and a half to cook after we do this. So don't think that you're about to cook this how you would cook a steak, okay? You're not going to. This is going to take more time than that. So now you can see I gave you an up-close view what these pieces look like. 
Again, it might look done. This is far from done. This would be super tough right now. You couldn't eat this like this. So we have to do those next steps or whatever. Let me let you hear it sizzle. Okay, so now you heard the, the meat sizzling. I let that, you know, pan get a little bit charred at the bottom and now we're gonna deglaze. So we're gonna use some of this sauce. <laughs> Y'all, how do you say it? Worcestershire. I don't know. I usually say Worcestershire, but that is not how it's pronounced. But um, y'all know what it is. You're gonna use that. We're deglazing right now. So right now we're picking up all of that flavor that was left from that meat that we charred and get into these coconut liquid aminos. You need to have it. You need to have this as a part of what you cook with. Stop using soy sauce, too much sodium. And coconut aminos has a slight sweet taste to me. So I love using it. You can see this is bubbling and ooey and gooey. Now we don't wanna leave it just like this because what'll happen is this uh, will end up thickening way too quick. So we're actually gonna add a bit of water to this here momentarily. About 16 ounces is gonna get you together. And then y'all, we just gonna let this meat cook for about an hour to an hour and a half, watching it and cooking it on, like my, my uh, eyes go from like one to seven. So I cook it on about a three or four, okay? I would say that's like low to medium. So as you can see, I'm letting it do a little bit in the pan before I add the water. I don't know why I do this, but I like to see my Lowry's, uh, not my Lowry's, my um, Worcestershire. <laughs> That's not how it's pronounced, I know. And my um, liquid amino is kind of bubbling like this. Now I'm going through and I'm adding some water. That's eight ounces. I'm gonna add another eight ounces. And just check out my crate and barrel cups or whatever. They cute. I love these cups. I just got them last week. Okay, so now this meat is ready to be topped with all of our veggies. Just give it a little stir just to pick up all that flavor at the bottom of the pan. Yes. These beef tips have been such a hit, y'all. I have been asked to cook them a number of times for people, and they love them every time. Throw those mushrooms right in there. Give it a little stir. If you don't love mushrooms, you don't have to put them in there. Take anything out you don't want. But the mushrooms cook down so much, I don't even think you would really, you know, be able to detect them that much. It's just a flavor. That's for me what it is. Next. We're gonna add those peppers and onions on top. Literally, we're just topping the meat with all of this goodness. Yes. I'm putting a little bit of every color uh, close to the meat, and then I'm gonna go through and just put the rest. Y'all, you don't have to do it like me. Just put all your veggies on top. That's the idea, okay? Now we're gonna put a top on this. We're gonna let it cook for about an hour to an hour and a half. Keep your eye on it. And yes, she's ready. Look, yes, you will see that I did. Uh, oh, first, let me just talk about how tender. See? You can pull it apart with your hands or whatever. What I was trying to say earlier is that you will see that I did cook them to where some of them are charred. I like that. If you don't want to cook them that long, don't. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lose some of y'all because I'm about to add a little pinch, a little pinch of sweet on this. Two packs of equal. I don't use real sugar, but a little bit of sweet on these beef tips. Um, is necessary to me and the people I've cooked it for have loved it and haven't complained. So yes, look, it's good. She ready. 
So these are the beef tips, y'all. This is the, you can see why also I left those peppers big. You see how you can see the red and the green and the onion. Listen, your girl finished this finally. Three recipes for y'all in one day. I did it. Beef tips, you can see. I left the peppers big. Now you might understand why because I want to taste those peppers in a big way. So you can see here I have some peppers. Looks like you see the orange, but you know it's yellow and red and bell pepper in there. And then I topped it off with some sandale tangy diced hot cherry peppers. If you're from Ipsy, y'all know y'all know shout out to gabriel's gabriel's hoagies will get your life together okay but i just put some of that there on the top it looks good or whatever and then that mac and cheese though that cauliflower mac and cheese came out right she ready and you might be wondering what's on top. Well, I love that macaroni and cheese from Panera Bread. I know it's not our traditional. I know. And when I say our, y'all know what I mean. It's not our traditional, but that pico di gallo hits different off the mac and cheese. So I just put a little bit. If you don't want that, don't add it. But it is good or whatever. It's so good. So y'all. I'm too tired after doing three recipes to do an on-camera taste test. I just want to eat this plate and go on ahead about my business. I'm posting all three videos tonight. I hope you all try this. And if you do, please let me know how it goes for you. I want to know what yours came out like. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Keto recipes coming in abundance. I've tried all types of things and your girl can cook or whatever. All right, bye. Listen, so who else look like this after cooking? Y'all know, listen, this is real life. Okay, I had to try this on camera. Had to. Don't mind my hair, it ain't about that. I'm about to try this food for y'all. First of all, the beef tip. Listen. How long? <laughs> Yo, I had some cilantro with that bite. the mac and cheese yo that tastes like mac and cheese y'all gotta try it just try it who look cute after they cook comment about it peace mmm